Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash home and podcast. Over 180,000 titles to choose from, from your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Thanks, Audible, and let's get into the episode. Uh 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 Home and Podcast Time! That's right, Ben for Tools is proud to present a Home Improvement Podcast. My name is Adam, and you all know my co-host, Jordan. Jordan, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing all right. How are you doing, Mr. Uh, Snowd- Snowden Dietz? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, lots of snow up here. Big time snowstorm. A lot of publicity. Biggest, lot of hype. biggest snowstorm ever? It's actually the biggest snowstorm... I I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but in the history of the world, yeah. no. Uh, we were supposed to get, like, 12 inches, and we've gotten a fair amount. Everybody's off work. Or uh, working from Kirsten, home. Kirsten's working from home here, uh, not too far away from me. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a bit like the end of days up here. Mm, yikes. Well, at least you got a partner for that and some kitties, I think, right? That's right, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a full house, but we're not here to talk about full house. Uh, we're talking about home improvement. <laughs> And uh, we're starting off on a, a bit of a somber yeah. tone today. Um, we tweeted on Wednesday uh, that Mickey Jones, best known as uh, Pete Bilker of k and Construction, passed away on Wednesday uh, at 76. So we kind of just wanted to talk about him mm-hmm. uh, at the start of the show, fond memories, and do a, a miniature tribute uh, to, uh, to Pete yeah. and Mickey. Yeah, I think he's yeah. earned it. You know, I was surprised when we first did like the bio on Mickey Jones that he was that old, 76, you know? Um, yeah, I guess he was, uh, when he was on the show, you know, he was, well, it's been 20, you know, he's about 50 when he was on Home Improvement, more or less. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and uh, an accomplished career. Uh, we've mentioned some of this before, but uh, you know, played the drums with Bob Dylan, a lot of television roles. Uh, I recently I watched uh, Total Recall, and he pops up uh, hmm. in a, a subway scene in that. Uh, the, the film Sling Blade, National Lampoon's Vacation, he plays a mechanic. And uh, yeah, recently he had a run on Justified. He was in Workaholics, and he was uh, 136 credits to his name, so he was he was always busy. Hmm. Uh, and uh, yeah, one of our favorites in terms of uh recurring cameos yeah. And, and yeah re- recurring characters on home improvement especially in this early mm-hmm. run i think uh yeah he definitely always uh <laughs> maybe you could say they brought k and b in a little bit too much but you you know you're always happy to have uh, well Mickey and there. you know what so. it, they the crowd really resonated with him too because there were times when it wasn't Dwayne, it wasn't rock yeah. it, w- it was just pete so and, <laughs> and, they, and yeah, little pete ch- they changed the K and B boys around a little bit, but Mickey was always uh, he was always the one they brought the in, and yeah, guy. Pete and Pete and little Pete. But yeah, it's uh, it's very sad news. Uh, big fans of Mickey. Uh, our our condolences go out to uh, his his family, and uh, yeah, I think we're gonna play a little clip yeah, here. Uh, bef- one of one of our favorite clips to kind of. Before we do that, do we want to talk about any of our favorites? Uh, yeah, Pete that's moments, a good idea. or just you know what what he was known for? I think. You know, the Pete, that would be me, is... Yeah, come to find out, I guess he uh, he does have a, a biography or an autobiography entitled That Would Be Me, published in 2009, so hmm. uh, maybe Audible listeners could uh, see if that's available, hmm. uh, you know, yeah. using that promo using that promo code if you want, or if not. Uh, but yeah, he did, he did publish that in 2009, and uh, yeah, the That Would Be Me tagline. I, I recently, I liked the episode with... Uh, him and Lil Pete, I thought that was pretty funny. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, sensitive. Uh, it's always kind of like uh, a sh- well, it's not not a wolf in sheep's clothing, but a sheep in a wolf's clothing, mm. maybe. Uh, where you know he looked like this kind of brute of a it's, man, he, he scary was ironic, biker you type. He's just an ironic yeah. character. Uh, you know, him and him and Dwayne were kind of uh, always good foils for a little while. Yeah, the the, the bickering as if they were sort of a uh, a married mm-hmm. couple was. Uh, it's a good. It's a good bit. Yeah, he's just just a funny guy. Good performance. Uh, always enjoyed having him yeah. on. And uh, like you said, let's let's play one of our favorite moments in the form of a clip. All right, sounds good. An ode to my mother, by Peter Bilker. That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> Who etched this tattoo in her purple muumuu? 
Mother. Mother. Who posted my bail every time without fail? Mother. Mother. And who rushed to the car with my severed thumb in a jar? Uh, father. Father. But who sewed it back on when the doctor was gone? Mother. Mother. Happy Mother's Day, Mom! Jordan, what are we covering this week? We're going to be covering episode 77, Death Begins at 40. Mm, yeah. Uh, you got some uh, I got some information? I do. Me? I have some. Uh, you know, on your, your Periscope video, I think you said this felt like a BK Taylor joint. I hate to disappoint <laughs> yeah, you. It? <laughs> no, it was Bob Bettinson. Um, but okay. you also mentioned, <laughs> you did mention another thing. You know, this I'm doing my research. I'm following up on what you're doing as far as on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned yeah. fifth anniversary. It had a fifth anniversary feel as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Bob Bettinson lasted fifth anniversary. That is interesting. Yeah, it definitely did. Uh, well, we'll get into why yeah. I said that later on. Just but interesting. Yeah, it, it did have that feel. I, it just goes to show that you're just a real master of home improvement at this point. So <laughs> It's sort of embarrassing to uh, have uh, inadvertently <laughs> been so right about something. You know, I, I take pride in, well, I take some pride in, in knowing a little bit about home improvement, but I, I don't want to get to the point where I'm like a savant or anything. No, no. We leave that to our listeners. So uh, yeah. this episode aired on August or October 4th, 1994. Title reference is, I believe, a book called Life Begins at 40 from the 30s, 1930s. Um, yeah, American self-help book that was very popular, so... This IMDb says it comes from, <laughs> IMDb says it comes from the optimistic view of life, which is, I mean, that doesn't, you know, was that the it, subtitle it of the really book? Make sense. I don't know. No, it, it just says the title comes from the optimistic view of life. Mm. Life begins at 40. So it comes from a belief. Some people. Have. All right. Well, uh, that might be something, but there was a very popular book written by Walter oh, B. Pitkin written during a time mm. of rapid increase in life expectancy for Americans. Okay. So. Wow. So it was yeah, around the time when medicine really uh, really stepped up its yeah, game. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Penicillin and all that. So mm-hmm, right. that leads us right into our alternative titles. So how many yeah. do you have? Three. I have four this time. Wow. We've kind of reversed the uh, roles here yeah, in this fourth season. Yeah, you know, season. I have more, but they're terrible, and you have less, and they're good. <laughs> so... Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know about that, but Shot, you, okay, know, you took a first. lot of shots at me in uh, your video, so I'm gonna start taking my shots at you. <laughs> I took uh, only one <laughs> shot, and that's a, that's a shot I'd take in person. So, mm. uh, title of the episode is "Death Begins at 40. Uh, I'll start with uh, my worst. Lordy, lordy, look who's forty. That's not that bad. Mm-hmm. This is perhaps my plainest uh, mm-hmm. heart attack, Harry. Okay, all right. Uh, I had one like that, and I and I changed it slightly, and I'm glad I did. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll save uh, I'll save my heart attack. I'll one. do it now. Let's I get it out of the way. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Harry's heartware. <laughs> uh, excellent. All right. Uh, yeah. Tim the Tin Man Taylor. It seemed it seemed too obvious for me, but I'm glad that you so, somebody's got to do it. Took it took advantage of it. All right, here's my last one. Honey. We've hit a new low. Oh, I've got a honey as well. Honey, I shrunk the tool man. Okay, yeah, good. And then my last one is pimple panic. <laughs> <laughs> that's also a very you... popular 1930s book. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe that's an optimistic view of life. <laughs> I got to give you credit for really taking the low-hanging fruit this week. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I dug a little bit deeper, but you came up with more, so, you know, you, you tell me which is better. You, you be the judge. All right, plot synopsis yeah. written by Bernie. Harry from the hardware store has a mild heart attack as Tim turns 40. Tim is worried and goes off the deep end about getting healthy. The boys give him a tool man figure made out of tools, and Jill gets him a ride on a jet. And then parentheses, <laughs> more power. Why the more... Why? Oh, I see it. Parentheses, more power, exclamation. Yeah, I mean, you could put that at the end of any home improvement <laughs> synopsis. But. Do it right after the heart attack. And also, and also Tim had more power. Mm, thanks, season. Bernie. Yeah, that, uh, that about sums it up. Thanks, Bernie. Mm-hmm. So let's get into it. Let's open on tool time. Uh, the 
our hosts are in some nice jumpsuit jumpsuits here. I was kind of hoping, you know, you read like the name on the jumpsuit. I was hoping Tim's would say Timbo. I thought that might be some yeah. nice symmetry with the the hard hats they usually we wear. Do, but we do get yeah, we do get that later on. But yeah, but we we don't get it on these jumpsuits. So Tim removes the spark plug. Uh, it is engine week, and they are going to use a special Binford spark plug cleaner and mm-hmm. uh, give it a little shine. So they do that. There's some tiny jokes already like he's saying you could eat off of the spark club but it'd have to be spark plug but it'd have to be like a tiny piece of turkey and a tiny piece of whatever so we're foreshadowing the tiny stuff that's going to come later in this scene Mm -hmm. yeah and they go into how to check engine problems and uh they're going to talk about that later this week and you know what's going to make it easier to check engine problems if you could just yeah. really get in that engine and just like Cro- see crawl exactly what, and take a look yeah see what's going on so luckily mm-hmm. they got a shrink ray from shrink shrinks are us or whatever it was <sighs> yeah uh, so yeah they like uh i mean they they literally shrink down into uh they test it out very small per- small versions of themselves and i was wondering is this the first time the show has defied reality quite like this like i mean obviously every episode tim gets hurt and like he could die or whatever and we Mm -hmm. kind of laugh but but is this the first time they've done anything quite like this wherein they like quite literally shrink themselves down and like walk (laughs) around in an engine yeah i guess so i'm trying to think we're supposed to think it's real right like that's that they're playing it like they're actually doing it like i think they know it's a gimmick but in the world of the show Aren't they acting as if they really have shrunk themselves down, or no? Am I right? I, I, I think they're just kind of doing it for a TV show appearance. I okay, don't, so I you don't think, think it's like TV, TV production? Yeah, I think okay. it's like, uh, you know, the Magic School Bus or something like that. Okay, all right. See, I didn't, I didn't really get that. I thought that they were like positing that they really could shrink themselves down. Maybe I'm just an idiot. I don't know. I mean, the, the only other time I can think of is when we were really confused about whether Wilson was Santa or not. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was that's true. Yeah, a long time ago. And they looked up at the sky, and uh, you'll see me. Yeah. Uh, did you notice that Tim's suit changed colors when he that shrinks was, down? Wasn't that later though? No, it's right away. Okay, uh, it goes yeah. from being like tan to like a almost like an orange. Uh, my guess is, you know, on a green screen, green you screen. want something that has a very different color. Yeah, I noticed so. later on that it was when he was small, it was red, and then he came out and it was just like a, a brown. Really dirty? Yeah, 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 which was strange. Didn't, didn't make quite as much sense, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is, like we kind of hinted at in our alternative titles, like this is very much like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And I looked it up and I was thinking, like, did this just come out? But this was uh, five years after Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, so I, w- they wouldn't have been capitalizing on any kind of, uh, you know, Moranis fever or anything. But, <laughs> Moranis fever. <laughs> but uh, it's really bad. I, I think, like, we'll talk about the episode as a whole, but this is uh, among the worst things that they've ever done on, on Tool Time, I think. Yeah, it's definitely really, really early green screen. Uh, you know, last episode you talked about like the increased budget and being able to do things like drop cranes on yeah, cars you don't or, see or beams here. on cars. You definitely you see some of the earlier season type stuff here, but yeah. uh, you know, there's lots of short jokes. Uh, Al says it's a small world after all, and then we get some creepy dolls to uh, transition us into the. What opening. is the relationship between the dolls? Is it just like oh, they're small it's miniatures from, it, no it's from uh, when he says it's a small world after oh, all he's, okay. he's they're doing it based on the attractions because they all okay. are wearing like different get-ups like they're from different countries and stuff okay i mean i, I i've been on the ride i guess but yeah it seems like a hey you know glad to have you glad to have you here to clarify that <laughs> the disney I, knowledge you know yeah. and it's you know it's a show on abc so it, yeah. it makes sense that okay. they would do something like that but okay be kind of a deep cut Real deep cut for just big Disney fans Disney like me. Disney heads. Disney heads. Mouse heads. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. They, well, it's a it's a rough opening scene, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah. They they sell them so short. No, no. All right. <laughs> uh, next scene. So side yard, and uh, the boys are working on a on a project. I wonder if Tim ever just kind of wishes that people like would just like get like his kids would just give him gifts, you know? Like, what's give, he give me a gift card to uh, Sears? I think he'd yeah. Be happy. Like, how about yeah? How about just like a shirt or something? But no, they're, <laughs> they're building a tool man uh, out of tools for their dad, or as Brad says later on, a tool man for the tool man. <laughs> He's really proud of himself when he says that, yeah, too. Yeah, he really is. Not as proud as Mark is in this scene where he, when he says, we even use needle nose pliers for his nose. Yeah, you can tell that was Mark's idea. Yeah, totally. And he wants but credit yeah. for it. 
Yeah, but they're just like building uh, a tool man. They out also of tools. have chest hair, um, and yeah. Jill makes a joke to save some of the chest for his back. Mm-hmm. I don't think we've seen Tim's chest hair before. I would remember it if we had. Uh, <laughs> no, we haven't. But uh, you know, it's me thinking. Uh, hopefully, we do sometime soon. We've seen no. We've seen him shirtless in the like, uh, yeah. The, yeah. The isn't it in the first like in the first episode with Mark. Yeah, they're like flexing to each other. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. Just not accurate. Yeah. You know? not, not as far as I know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, they head inside, and and you know. It's reinforced again. It's Tim's birthday, and he's got the whole day mapped out. He knows everything you know what, he wants what does to he eat. Want? Uh, I don't remember. He wants, he wants like a big meal. He, he basically he basically wants steak and sex. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I, that's what you've uh, you've asked for every birthday for like the last decade. So, <laughs> uh, man, no, I mean, like they, they he talks about getting like this giant steak and a bunch of uh, salt <laughs> on the steak to season it, and then he's like, "Let's do it in the garage." Yeah, and they. Uh, they schlacked uh, some table or something, but it wasn't dry, so they were stuck. Which is, it's a yeah. They they really they every the, once in a while they, the they just surprise me. Hard. I know. Yeah, steak and that would have been a good episode title. Steak and sex. Well, I wrote it down. <laughs> oh uh, really? But, yeah, oh, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't use it for a title, but yeah. Uh, you know, this got me wondering. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Do you have like a, a birthday meal preference that you get every year, whether it's dessert or like the main dish or something? No, uh, uh-uh, uh no, mm. I really don't. I um, you, you know, like I to mix like, it up. I do. I like to have a good meal, but I, I don't have anything that I would go to. Uh, I remember when I was really young, like it became a tradition that for my birthday I wanted to go to Taco Bell for like three <laughs> or four years in a row. But uh, do you remember when you were a kid and like? You know, it was such a treat to go to McDonald's or Burger King or yeah. something. Yeah, and now, you, like, now I could go whenever I wanted, and I just don't really want to. But yeah, Taco Bell, was that was a big thing. But no, in recent years, I, I can't think of anything. Mm. Uh, for a long time, you know, I, I was a big fan of apple crisp for dessert instead of cake. Okay. Yeah, I so, do remember that. So I would get that. Uh, but other than that, you know... Uh, I kind of changed it up. And you so. like to go to Applebee's for all your birthday meals. Oh, man, I do not like Applebee's at all. <laughs> that is a constant conversation that I have. I'm not a constant conversation. That'd be a terrible constant conversation. But, uh, you know, my, my in-laws, they like Applebee's. At least I think my, my parents my like mother in law. I don't and mind it. And so we're always, like, they're always, if we're eating out with them, they're like, we could go to Applebee's. And we're like, no, it's the worst place ever. Why would you go there? Uh, and but, you, call yeah. it, you call it Crapplebee's still? <laughs> that was Jeremy. That oh, was Jeremy's okay. doing. Right. Okay. <laughs> he also called Wendy's Wendell's. On I do remember that. Yeah, that one wasn't quite as good. I mean, it was well, right. you know, you, you, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Yeah, that's that's, that's Jeremy. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. This scene just kind of ends. <laughs> There's a conversation. Many He's turning better than forty. Women. Is what we're He's getting. Turning forty. Right? Jill's getting hit on by college guys, et cetera, et cetera. And except for they uh, miss their mom. That's why. That's kind of funny. Yeah, I liked it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, let's go back to tool time. Let's quickly go through this scene. I mean, it's terrible. I mean, Heidi gets some more lines to start with, so that's yep. good. Yep. Oh, yeah. So yep. she gets, she introduces the show, she brings him to the car, she knocks on the engine. Uh, they go inside the engine, and we've got Mini Tim and Mini Al, and they're in the piston area. Uh, there's some piston jokes. And they're trying to diagnose some en- engine issues, and it's very quickly, like you said, they just kind of go back to full size. But only one of them does. Mm-hmm. And as you said, Tim is straight dirty, even though he wasn't dirty while he was in the engine. Yeah. I don't know why. And then uh, Al is left small, tiny, and uh, Tim patronizes him and, and steps he's, on and him. He's, he's, and this is, this is the last Al appearance. We never and this, see is, again. Th- this is the death that they're talking about in the yeah. title. <laughs> death <laughs> begins and ends at 40. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's really, I think this is really just stupid stuff. I really do not like the shrink ray stuff in this episode. It's not great. No. Um, and uh, it would be cool if they did other things. They just do it for like five seconds. Yeah. I mean, I actually disagree with you. I would not have wanted them to see to see them do other things well small. yeah i guess the thing is we're not really car guys <laughs> that's an understatement <laughs> so so that would be a big problem for us it's sure. weird that we watch the show we're not like handymen we are not car guys we just really love do- connoisseurs of comedy yeah comedy in michigan that's all yeah, we love yeah uh all so. right so that's that and 
now we're heading somewhere we haven't been before, and we're going to be going there quite a bit in the coming years, much like uh, the bar in Cheers, you might say. And this mm. is uh, what I'm going to affectionately call H.H. Harry's Hardware. H.H.? H&H? H&H, yeah. Uh, and we get our first appearance of Harry and our first appearance of uh, Benny Baroni. Uh, played by uh, Jim Labriola. Not our first appearance, you know, we, we've talked about this. I don't need to go through it again. But yeah. first appearance as Benny. Uh, we also this, get Felix. Felix is back in the fold. Felix has a mustache, though. Did he have a mustache before? I heard that he had unclogged a cat from a kitchen sink or something. <laughs> uh, it was probably that cat that we dissected in anatomy uh, class. Yeah, probably. Uh, <laughs> so I'll give a... I'll give a bio on uh, on Harry here. Uh, Harry, uh, played by Blake Clark, 111 credits to his name. Probably best known. I mean, this guy's done a lot. The best Water Boy. known <laughs> for all of the Adam Sandler movies since like The Water Boy. I think he's the uh, <laughs> Ishkiato. <laughs> <laughs> I also like him in Mr. Deeds. Have you seen Mr. Deeds? I'm sure I have. You have. I don't know if you remember it, but he plays like. There's like this quarterback that plays for the jets and he like plays his dad uh oh, and man the quarterback like gets out of line and then this guy likes like is like gonna like spank his son he's like 40 <laughs> it sounds funnier than it actually is um uh, but he's in like he's been in all of the adam sandler movies up into up to the ridiculous six uh recently he's been on the show smilf which is on showtime he does the voice of uh the slinky dog and all the toy story movies mm. um lots of just yeah lots of stuff over the years he he's very very busy he was in boy meets world uh obviously jordan this is important to you smart guy uh, <laughs> this, this guy's done it i like him he's uh he's good joe dirt he plays oh joe dirt he plays the old cajun man how are you back at uh yeah he's great he's gonna really be like 23 him. episodes of home improvement so he is a really it. welcome addition as well as benny and i really don't even mind felix so just uh overall i like I like the scene. I like yeah. the the change that we're gonna have going forward. Do we? Forward here. Do we do? Have I done a, a Benny? I think you, before. Well, I don't remember if you did or not. So you I, might as well do it again quickly. It's, it's well, it's not gonna take me very much time. Sorry, <laughs> Benny. Uh, so uh, Benny played Jimmy Labriola, playing Benny Baroni. Might as well just use his real name at that point. Yeah. Uh, six credits to his name. He's gonna be in twenty four episodes of Home Improvement. He was in the Santa Claus, uh, playing mm-hmm. a truck driver. Then he was in Joe Somebody, which we're definitely going to cover on the podcast at some point because <laughs> I kind of like that movie. Uh, we should probably do that soon. We'll in 2016, he was in Cop on something called Cop Show. That's about it. Okay. Well, he's not improvement. They should have had him be Marie's like brother because they. I was already, thinking that as well. I thought they could be related. Could. Us. Yeah. Hmm. Too bad. All right, let's talk about the <laughs> That's scene. That's your. Are you going to make a T-shirt with her face on it that just says "My Locket"? My Locket. The alley. <laughs> yeah, put a poll. Maybe people will buy that from us. We'll see. Yeah, probably not. Uh, but- so as you said, we're we're in this new location. Uh, the joke here is that Tim is Harry's best customer, and he's basically trying to get him to buy more and more things. For example, uh, the needle no- needle nose pliers. He has a deal. If you buy yeah. twelve, you get the thirteenth free. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Tim Tim scoops up that deal. He does get some jerky out of it though. Yeah. So. It's just guys talking shop, you know. <laughs> Felix is guys. Felix is on a diet, and Tim says, "Oh, just started, huh?" Because <laughs> yeah, Felix, kind of Felix yeah. is larger. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. Like you said, guys, this is like the barber shop for Tim. <laughs> this is like the movie, the barber shop movies. <laughs> I imagine. I've never seen them. <laughs> never seen them either. Well, there yeah. you go. That's the first movie you've never seen. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, not yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, they uh, they're really razzing each other. Uh, they, you know, once Felix introduces his diet, they all kind of talk about their own diets, and and Harry says, you know, I'm fit. I was in the Marines. Uh, I, I'm as fit as a fiddle. I would argue the opposite. He's not in bad shape, but like he's not fit enough to like be, bra- <laughs> be bragging about it. Like he's carrying an extra thirty pounds. I would say his, 20, his manhood pounds. was challenged here. So he so just... he gets down on the ground. He does five pretty good push ups, but then on the sixth one, Jordan, he comes up. Come to find out, he's having. The lamest heart attack I've ever seen on television. Wow. It's so I mean, anticlimactic. Well, and then they don't, they kind of just leave it at that. There's no, yeah. like, scene where Tim goes to the hospital. There's no... I, uh, I mean, I'm glad about that. I, I would prefer yeah. that because they don't need to mind that drama anymore. But, like, he just like, gets up and he's, they're like, what do you, you look like you're having a heart attack. Yeah, I think I am. 
And then they and, eat. They they spit out their jerky. That's yeah. the joke. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's important for the episode. You know, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, it's really gonna. I mean, I guess this is what the episode's named after at mm-hmm. this point going forward. So but Harry's not even. Well, I guess they do say that Harry's forty. Well, next scene. We'll we'll, we'll talk about it. Then. So All Tim right. uh, Tim goes home and. Um, well, where do we start here? Well, Jill got him all of what he wanted for yeah. his birthday. She's got a nice big steak. She's got the salt. She's got she's got everything. Um, and Tim comes in and he's changing all the plans. He says, "It's uh, this was a wake up call for me. You know, Harry had a heart attack. I need to eat better. I am." He says, "I am middle aged," which the term middle aged has always been confusing to me. I don't really know what it stands for, but I I assumed middle aged was like halfway to death. I think right? so. Yeah. Okay. So if the average expectancy is somewhere in the 80s, 40 is about right. Yeah. So is it that high though? Life expectancy? Yeah. Well, in Japan, it's higher than it is here. I'll well, tell you that. <laughs> well, well, we're not there. <laughs> I think it's right around 80. All right. You keep talking. I'll look. This is important. <laughs> I want to say in Japan, it's in the 80s. Here, it's upper 70s. Jordan, we're not talking about japan All right. i'm just trying uh, to give everyone a perspective <laughs> people love perspective 2011 u.s expectancy was 78.7 years bam which is uh slightly below blah, blah, blah. uh men 76 women 81 so classic yeah i mean you, you know, <laughs> there's just, nothing like, more classic like, than that statistic men love steak you know just classic <laughs> classic stats don't you uh, dare so, yeah. take my salt away from me <laughs> he's midway there basically <laughs> he's been away there in so, any case yeah yeah i'm glad we we stuck on that for a little while uh we do learn that harry and tim go all the way back to high school they were football buddies it's he, another one of those harry things seems so much older than tim why i mean what, no? what makes you say that i just appearance wise okay yeah no i don't know once you get to a certain age i, I can never tell how old people are anymore all right fair it's enough. right around 40 for me okay. 40 to 50 for me is confusing Mm-hmm. fair enough okay. right. it's a confusing time uh jill tries to calm him down because tim is going off the deep end here but he, he's not listening he's gonna go to every doctor he can think of so he breaks out the old telephone book and he starts going through the anesthesiologist the proctologist whatever else um, right so he's gonna apparently spend a million dollars in medical bills here well, so. it's a classic Tim overreaction. Yeah, I think you were saying this earlier, but like it, it does. He's like, we, Harry, you know, we played high school football together. He, I go to his hardware store all the time. It's like, <laughs> well, I've never seen that. This is the fourth season of the show. It's like when we're Benford. At, it's like when we're Benford about halfway died. Halfway through, and yeah, uh, we're you've almost never done. mentioned Harry, this guy you're once. Me, your best friend is, uh, yeah. She he comes over. He's like, Harry had a heart attack, and she's like, Harry from the hardware store. Like, yeah, I mean. <laughs> Uh, Thanks for re- that, yeah, reinforcing yeah, that. Yeah, I guess so. Um, but yeah, it, it is like they're kind of retconning a relationship as they sometimes do on the show. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Tim's freaking out. Uh, I'm no freaking ste- out. No at steak, this point. no eggs, no salt. Uh, instead, uh, they need to do like watermelon and various <laughs> other things. I guess that's later on. It but, is later on, but I'm glad you brought it up now. Yeah, I might as well just bring it up early. <laughs> uh, Jill is doing a lot of bits here. Uh, Indi- uh, Indiana Jones and the P- Pimple of Doom. <laughs> pimple of Doom. He, he loves that. A, yeah, I love it because he has a pimple and uh, he's just he's just freaking out, man. He's freaking out, man. Uh, so we go outside and Tim is working on the vines that are climbing up these little things are uh, attached to the house he's i guess gardening a little bit i don't know what he's doing but he's uh also taking the spades that he's using using and checking out the lump on his on his neck the pimple he's really concerned about this pimple brad and randy come through the side yard as they are wont to do Mm -hmm. and they're wondering what he's doing uh they also think this is ridiculous because you know everyone in seventh grade has pimples everywhere so totally and uh, that's the end of that scene, right? Or do they move uh, into... They kind of transition Whoops. inside. And this okay. is where... I just... Mark is decorating watermelon. What's he putting... What's he writing on the watermelon with? Is that I frosting? Think... Ooh. Yeah, I guess so. That's gross. That, that sounds terrible. Yeah, that's gross. Uh, I didn't think also, about that. They're also sticking candles in the watermelon, <laughs> which... <laughs> they're going to have waxy and frosting uh, yeah, watermelon. Know, but, uh, you know, there are better... Like, you don't have to go directly from cake to watermelon. Like, there's got to be something in between there. <laughs> something in between. Like, apple crisp. Know, that's sugar, the answer. Sugar-free something. Yeah, apple crisp, sure. But, yeah. Uh, the, Jill's cooking cauliflower, and the boys think it smells really bad. Which are is, you a uh, cauliflower flan? Fan? Flan? <laughs> Stan? <laughs> man? Did you get in the bottle this morning? Uh, a little bit. I do like it, yeah. 
<laughs> okay. I yeah, like man. it too. Cool, 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 cool. That's <laughs> I'm what's glad up. we brought that uh, up too. So Tim is uh, outside and he's using these two spades to like inspect something beneath his shirt. And uh, this is where we get Wilson. And, um, you know, let's just play clip. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hi, Wilson. Howdy, neighbor. Working on a flush? What? Well, I see you're holding a pair of spades. <laughs> oh, I kill myself. Speaking of that, I feel like my body's falling apart. Really? Seems to me you've always been in excellent health. It was till hardware Harry turned into heart attack, Harry. Oh, yes, indeed. I heard about that. Hmm. How's he doing, Tim? Oh, he's just fine. I don't know about me, though. This really affected me, Wilson. Well, I can understand your reaction. Fifteen years ago, I was affected by a similar event. Someone close to you had a heart attack? Oh, yes. Someone very close. Me. What? You never told me I had a heart attack? Mm -hmm. What happened? Well, an acute thrombus occluded my myocardial artery, which I had already <laughs> partially obstructed by a sclerotic plaque. Come on, cut the chase. Did, were you not eating right or not exercising? No, 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 no. Even before my heart attack, I enjoyed quite the same lifestyle as I do now. I ate well, got plenty of rest, I exercised regularly. What about stress? I didn't have any stress. You hadn't moved in yet. <laughs> Um, well, how did you deal with it? If it happened to me, I wouldn't be able to get out of bed. Well, for a long while there, Tim, I couldn't. I refused to take any risks. I even canceled my long-awaited trek up Mount Kilimanjaro. Well, that was a good choice. You don't want to climb anything that starts with the words, kill a man. Actually, Tim, after a while, I did go, and it was one of the highlights of my life. Well, what made you change your mind? I realized how lucky I was. My heart attack didn't kill me, so I act like it did. <laughs> See, Tim, the Roman rhetorician Seneca once said, if we let things terrify us, then life is not worth living. Shouldn't make a mountain out of a, of a pimple. Or any kind of epidermal oddity. Happy birthday, Tim. Thanks, Wilson. Tim is uh, he's in the side yard. He's using two spades to inspect himself. Wilson... Wilson says that he uh, he makes like a joke about a pair of spades, like a, a poker joke or something. He says, uh, are you going for a flush? Oh, yeah. Kills it. Hilarious joke. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, they they have a, a, an intimate back and forth. Wilson reveals that he had a heart attack 15 years ago. Just and, before Tim moved in. Just before Tim moved in. And, you know, Tim says, well, did you change the way you lived? And he says, well, no, I... I was exercising before. I was eating right. What does Wilson's exercise look like? Was I was wondering, I had, like this whole episode, I'm wondering what these people are doing for exercise because Tim says he's like fit all the time. I've never seen him exercise once. No. And we know he doesn't eat well. Those stinkies aren't good Don't for they, you. Don't they like, doesn't he bench with, uh, and for whom the belch told, doesn't he bench in the garage with Chris McDonald? Oh, yeah, and I don't think he can do very much. Right? Yeah, he can't do very much, yeah. But yeah, Wilson says, like, you know, I lived healthy before, and then afterwards I was kind of concerned, but I decided, you know, like, uh, and he gives some sort of uh, a quote or something about how, you know, a life lived in fear is not really a life lived at all. And then um, he decided that he he, was, he wasn't going to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, and then he decided afterwards that he did, and he was glad he did because it was one of the greatest moments of his life. Mm. And uh, Stop yeah. worrying and start living. Yeah, and uh, that's it. So, Jordan, uh, do you uh, do you have a reading this week for the Wilsonometer? You know, I put the the meter in the drawer, uh, and so uh -huh. I need to go get it real quick. But you okay. go ahead and sure. you start. Yeah. So uh, let me just check here. Right. Make just sure you put it. in your glasses, because last time I'm pretty sure you read it wrong. Yeah. Let me uh, open my case. Okay, glasses are on. Um, looks like the reading on this week's Wilsometer is 101 degrees. Whoa! It is scalding. I think this is really good advice. I, I like it. I think it's funny. I think it is relevant, and I think it's something we haven't heard before. And, you, and best of all, it's concise. So uh, uh, yeah. 101, 101 I, for me. I would agree. You know, we talked about you couldn't even go over 100, so I'm a little concerned that your Wilsometer know, is I, broken. I, to be honest, I didn't think we could, <laughs> but this week we did somehow. <laughs> I'm afraid when we go into the negatives, that's going to be a real concern. It's gonna be, yeah, it's, yeah, it's gonna but yeah, I would, I would agree. It's at least 99, 100 degrees. Uh, it's 
Make sure you got your sunscreen on. That's all yeah. I can say. Because, okay. uh, you know, he tempers it with some jokes. He starts with the flush joke. He uh, does a stress joke that says he didn't have stress until Tim moved in. And uh, they all work for me. And um, I always love any mention of Mount Kilimanjaro as well. So Yeah, definitely. That's why right, I like so, it. <laughs> all right, go ahead and put your... Put your uh, all right, let me open the door. Away. Yes. <laughs> Slam. Yep. All right. Uh... <laughs> So we're back inside, uh, and this is a scene uh, that is not foreign to fans of uh, Home Improvement. <laughs> Tim comes in, and he reiterates the advice. It's muddled, but everything works out, and uh, they make up, and... They make out? They Well, I'll say that for last. Uh, Jill, <laughs> Jill has received uh, all of the tests that Tim received. From, I don't know. We didn't see him go to the doctor. Uh, but somehow he's been to the doctor and the tests have come back and Jill reads him through. And apparently he's the healthiest man alive, uh, <laughs> uh, similar to an Olympian in, in many of his, uh, his current <laughs> test results. But uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's fit as a fiddle, Jordan. Yeah, we don't see it ever, really. But, no, uh, but hey, you know what? That's all right. And it ends in a, it's a, it's a kind of a nice scene, I would say. It's, uh, they're, they're, Although he's not pregnant, that's the problem. That's true. Uh, they're sure. sweet to one another, but it ends in like a very passionate kind of makeout scene, which was pretty gross. Yeah, take they it really off the garage, you weirdos. Yeah, they really go <laughs> at it. I mean, is that couch even schlacked? <laughs> I don't think so, but it's time for some steak and sex. Oh, yeah. I think, well, we're getting one. Uh, you tell me which. All right. Last, uh, last scene of the episode. The uh, the subplot the nobody picked, the subplot the, the nobody cared reveal. about the whole time that you forget even was in this episode. Uh, <laughs> they show off their 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 uh, tool man for the tool man, uh, and it's wearing it's the, got Timbo the Timbo hat, hat on. The Timbo hat. Uh, the joke here is that they used like all of Tim's good tools to make it, and uh, the joke is like you got to use the best tools when you make something. No, I guess this isn't the last scene, but it's pretty much the last scene, and uh, <laughs> it's fine. It Jill would, is, a real, Jill a real is, gift would have been better. Yeah, Jill is filming his reaction as mm-hmm. well. Um, and uh, then then she wants to... F- basically, she's filming his reaction mostly for what she got him. Mm-hmm. Because she got him the real gift, which was a flight in a... I, I think don't he's know, flying with the Blue Angels. Yeah, was... it's some sort of Air Force plane. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. Uh, looks like he's having a heck of a time. We cut to some stock footage of an airplane. Uh, and But I, I do think he's actually flying. I do. Th- I do, too. But I think the footage of like the planes taking off was just like stock footage that they they got somewhere else. But uh, yeah, they used all they, their money on that shrink ray. So yeah, but I do think yeah, like it shows him like in the plane flying, and uh, I think that was real. Uh, and it ends with him asking the pilot if it looks like a pimple or something like that. Yeah. So I told uh, you it goes out with a whimper, but pimple pimple panic. Mm, yeah, it, it crossed the episode. Yeah, and roll credits fade to black. Death begins at forty. Jordan, uh, what would you think of this one? Highs and lows. Yeah, I mean, it was okay. Um, you know, my lows, this is pretty much a rehash of when Tim's Tim gets to the age where his dad had passed away early, and um, he kind of goes through that whole reckoning of, you know, how long am I going to live? What am I going to blah, blah, blah. Uh, we even, I think there's like the exact same reaction for Mark where he says, like, is dad really going to die? I think um, Ariva Dirty Benford is kind of like this one, too. Yeah, there's the Will stuff going on. So. Right, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot like that. I did like uh, Harry's and kind of the world building there. You know, we get Tim in a different place than the garage or tool time. And uh, we know that'll become an important place with a couple new characters. So those are always welcome. Uh, The shrinking tool, I don't know. I feel like it could have been better. Obviously, it looks a little bad by today's standards and what they can do now. Um, Mm -hmm. But it was a novel idea for the show, something they haven't done before, so that was okay. But yeah, overall, uh, it was okay. There was was a lot of steak and sex. And um, (laughs) (laughs) sometimes I'm okay with it and sometimes I'm not. You were okay with it this time around. Yeah, it it was home improvement after dark, really. Yeah. I think uh, this episode is more good than bad. I... You and I are coming at the shrinking, the shrink ray thing from a different angle. Like, I think that it's just a terrible idea executed <laughs> poorly, and there's no way they could have ever made it work. And I think Do- that is a real low point of the episode for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I didn't love what they did with it, but yeah. I did like that it was, they were trying something different. Yeah. So. But See, yeah, keep even, going. I didn't even like that part of it. I wish they would have tried the same old. No, <laughs> uh, so I thought that was really bad. I actually like the rest of the episode quite a bit. I think it is fairly funny. There's some good jokes in here. 
definitely like the introduction of Harry's hardware and the Harry and Benny characters. I think that's going to be something that we'll eventually probably get sick of, but I'm enjoying it for the time being. It's stuff we've seen before, but at least it's there's new jokes and it's kind of funny. Uh, I thought the Wilson scene was very, very strong. So, yeah, I uh, generally have a pretty positive reaction to this episode. Okay. That's great. Well, that is episode 77, Death Begins at 40. So let's move over to Sean's social media roundup. Uh, if you want to reach out to us, uh, you can do so at thehomeandpodcast.com. Go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash homeandpodcast. You can tweet at us at homeandpodcast. You should really be following Twitter because Adam puts up some awesome polls. He's starting to periscope some uh, live feedback of the episodes it's almost as long he, as the episodes yeah it's about as long uh he takes a lot of shots at me and i'm not there to respond so i'm sure he enjoys every moment those are of the that. best kind of sh- best kind of shots to take yeah. is when somebody can defend themselves <laughs> this week he uh claimed that i liked the honey i shrunk my kids uh, <laughs> honey see- i shrunk honey i shrunk the kids the kids see uh, there's proofs that i don't like that series Freudian, but- Freudian slip i'd say uh <laughs> so you, you don't like it no, I was never uh, never a big fan. I don't even know if I've seen more than like half of one of those movies. Really? Um, oh. You know what? At, at Disney, they had. I mean, it was a Disney property, so they had like a three D show. Yeah, and uh, they had a three D show. They had like a kids play area where they had giant blades of grass and all this kind of stuff that you could play in. Uh, never was my thing. I, Do you I like Honey? Like I that. blew up the kids. No, I don't even know if I've seen that one. Mm, I know what you're doing this weekend. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> Not that. So, yeah, I don't like those either. Uh, hey, well, let me ask you this, though. Do you like Little Giants? I mean, who doesn't? Yeah, it's great, right? It's one of the yeah. best. Yeah. Uh, that, one, that one's amazing. But, yeah, if you want... Uh, continuing to do the roundup here uh, if Why? you want to support the Why? show who cares Why? don't yeah yeah just, if you I'm, want to su- support the show go to patreon.com slash home podcast it would be great you, to get some additional support here we are yeah. you know we're struggling times are t- times are tight yeah it's, it's, if i get snowed in here i you know i'm low on rations and i'm gonna need money I, to- I did see that it looks like you have a fireplace so you got that going for you heck yeah man of course i do what do you think what do you think <laughs> the money we had that installed after we started the patreon <laughs> <laughs> you can also, if you uh, don't want to give us money, uh, you can go to iTunes or Apple Podcasts or whatever it's called nowadays and leave us a five star review. That helps other people find us. So, yeah, Adam, leave us five stars. If you're gonna leave three stars, just <laughs> just don't listen anymore. You know? If you're gonna like, leave three stars, just like email us three stars and tell us why you do that. Yeah, that way it we'll, doesn't affect our score. And then we'll respond back to you. Uh, yeah. yeah. So Patreon, dollar dollar bills, iTunes reviews are also our currency. Uh, thank you. Social media wise, poll this week: best movie with Mama, M O M M A, Mama. M-A-M-A, or mom in the title. Ten votes. Uh, 20% said Big Mama. 20% said Stepmom. 20% said the horror movie Mama with Jessica Chastain. 40% said Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. And Jordan, you thought Throw Mama from the Train should have been in the mix. Yeah, I, you don't consult me a lot for these polls, which never. is fine. Yeah, never. Which is fine. I understand. It's it's your baby. But uh, mm-hmm. I, I thought it was a worthy mention, and I think uh, another listener of the show agreed, so... At least, uh, I don't know how many people voted, but there's a few percentages of people who said throw Mama from the train. So you're saying if I would have added that as an option, we probably would have gotten more votes. Yeah, I think you should redo the poll. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> thinking about it. All right, anything else going on on Twitter? Not you, worth mentioning. I mean, just live streams, which are awesome. You're doing those Wednesdays? Is that what you're doing? I don't want to like say when I'm yeah. doing them or if I'm doing them, because it's kind of usually just something I do when I have a little bit of spare time and... Yeah, uh, well, I think people need to be watching because those are amazing. Yeah, and, they're great. Uh, yeah, it's really good to watch me stall as I have to wait for a commercial <laughs> on Hulu to get done. <laughs> well, they get an idea of uh, what you look like, uh, yeah, what, your, what your fashion's like, and uh, you know your cats, your mm-hmm. your place. So it's a real behind the scenes type of thing, and I think that's what people like. Yeah, I, I I know that's what they like. Uh, you're, you're not going to get that from me. I'm real private. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> all right. I did want to say uh, on my end, you know, we we talked about Superman and all that stuff last week, and how uh, I kind of put it out there that you know um, a lot of the Superman gifts I didn't quite know what to do with. My mom said I won't be getting any more going forward, so mm. she did not appreciate that. You, you upset her. She put the hammer down. 
uh, as she's wont to do. Mm-hmm. So that's what happened on Facebook this week. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for the update on that. <laughs> uh, Jordan, you got a question for me? I got a question. Uh, it's not a good question, but, okay. uh, you know, we're getting older. You're <coughs> upwards of 40 now, 50. <laughs> yeah, uh, 27. <laughs> I saw that you were wearing a hat in your Periscope video, and I was wondering if this was why. Adam, do you have any gray hair? Oh, it's so funny you asked that because yeah, I do, and uh, <laughs> it, like I, Kirsten just noticed one the other day. Um, does so, it, it, it does it bother you? You know what? Um, here's the thing. I guess not. <laughs> I, I like where this is going. <laughs> I guess it doesn't bother me, uh, only because it's like, you know, I'll find like one every so mm. often, or like one every couple of months. Um, there's nothing I can do about it. Mm. I think it is infinitely better than losing no losing your hair or going bald or thinning hair, and that's seemingly not an issue for me. So uh, I don't like it, but no, I, it doesn't it doesn't bother me. Uh, I said yesterday that if it goes earlier than like forty or forty five, I will do some You'll coloring. Just, I'll do just some for coloring. A Probably, but uh, no. In terms of things to worry about, things that upset me, I suppose not. Now, if I were balding, and no disrespect to anyone that is or has, that would bother me. <laughs> what about you? Yeah, uh, I definitely have. It. Andrea definitely likes to point it out, point it out when she sees it. Yes, yeah. uh, in my hair, quite a bit, probably more than you've got going on. Yeah, um, but I am just a tiny bit older than you, so just give it. Give it a few months and, and you'll get even more. And your life has been so much more stressful than mine. So much more stressful. <laughs> uh, I've got it on my head. I've got it in other locations that we don't need to name. Oof. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it doesn't really bother me that much either. Yeah. Um, you know, my dad went gray pretty early, and mm-hmm. so I kind of saw this one coming. How and, your brother, uh, what about your brothers? It's <sighs> a good question. Um, Cause that would be a good barometer. It would be a good barometer. Why don't you get back to me on that? Yeah, <laughs> I don't. Reach out to him. <laughs> hey guys, can Adam really wants some input yeah. here? Yeah, I don't know. I think I might have just as much as uh, my brothers at this point. Okay. So right. I don't know. Fair enough. All I don't right. know. You know, I thought that would be a stupid question, but it turned out to be better than I thought it would be. So you know, sometimes, sometimes that that happens. Um, well, I guess that about covers it. Jordan, what do we cover next week? Well, the eyes don't have it next week. I just don't have it. Well, I can all... I mean, we're not speculating about what episodes are about <laughs> anymore, but I can only begin to guess what we're going to yeah, be getting yeah. into. Something with the eyes, I guess. Yeah, I suppose so. All right, well, uh, listeners, thank you for listening. Jordan, thank you for joining me. Uh, we want to dedicate this episode to Mickey Jones again, and uh, I guess we should say uh, take care. Take care, everybody. Take care, everybody.